You're listening to the Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It is Friday, the 29th of December, 2023, and this is episode 45 of The Observing Eye. Coming at you not live from the computer hell cabin, but in transient motion, as I am currently away for Christmas. In this episode, as I spoke about last week, I am going to be not doing the usual, and we're going to be playing a recording of a previous podcast I used to create a few years ago called The State of Mind. Now, the episode that I'm going to be playing to you is uh, an interview that I did with a, a VH1 radio DJ called Ralph Sutton. Now, Ralph is a TV and radio veteran. He's the host of the Good Sugar podcast alongside Marcus and Taby, who's the founder of the health and wellness platform Juice Press, and the Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll Show. He's also the founder of the Gas Digital Network, and you can find him online at www.iamralphsutton.com and on Instagram at IamRalphSutton. Ralph shares his well-being journey with us, offers some advice on living a healthy life, and opinions on the current state of the well-being industry, of which I share quite deeply. Fundamentally, You've got to do what's right for you and watch out for guru bullshit. So I hope you enjoy the interview with Ralph. Ralph is a fascinating guy, really, really interesting to talk to him a few years back. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping you'll get as much out of it as I did, which is a, a huge amount. He's a, he's a great guy to chat to. On that note, I'm going to leave you with the episode of The State of Mind. Wishing you all a fabulous new year. Hope you've had a great Christmas and we'll be back on the airwaves with our usual platform on Friday, January the 5th in the new year. Much love, everybody. Catch you soon and enjoy the podcast. So, Ralph, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm a big fan of social symmetry, so I'm everywhere at I am Ralph Sutton. I always feel you can find some sort of, you know, way to bastardize your handle to get it universal. You know, so I am Ralph mm. Sutton everywhere. I think people like, oh, on Instagram, I'm underscore six, nine, whatever, you know, like just <laughs> find something that you can use everywhere. It's going to make yeah. your life a lot happier. Awesome stuff. Awesome. So do you want to, do you want to tell everybody a bit about yourself? My intro was quite brief. You're, you're, sure you're you've got- a nice intro. I liked it. So um, I'll tell you, cause I'll, I'll give a very short up until when this like health and wellness thing started. So we'll just go quickly. I started, I grew up in Brooklyn, na- native New Yorker and had a lot of odd jobs. I, as you said, veteran is a nice way of saying old. I'm 51 years old. So I've been around a long time. And excuse me, I started working in nightclubs and as a, as a promoter and DJ and stuff like that in regular clubs in New York city. When I was a kid through a bizarre set of circumstances, I ended up being a strip club DJ for a long time. Then I went to cooking school, ran a restaurant for a bunch of years and still did the strip club on the side because it was crazy money to be 22, 23 and get thousands of dollars a night in cash. Mm-hmm. Hard to walk away from that, you know, but um, that I'd say that journey there started with like, I was never been a big drinker or a big drug guy or anything like that, but mm. it is a toxic environment. There's no way to deny it. You're around people who are generally this wasn't their first life choice, be it the customer or the dancer. You don't know mm-hmm. child wants to do that. You fireman stripper. No, you know, when you're a kid, you'd say fireman, policeman, whatever. <laughs> so it just was a, a little bit of a toxic environment uh, for various reasons. But then I met someone there who was another strip club DJ who worked in radio through a long story that I will not get into. I ended up working with him and launching a radio show. That show went to at one point being on almost a hundred stations and I wow. did that for most of my adult life from 29 to 45. So 16 years, 17 years, something like that. Mm. And that's when I, I was known as Ralph from the tour bus, which was the name of the show. Mm-hmm. And that led me to be a VJ and host on VH1, hosted a bunch of um, 
festivals and concerts around the country, like the Sturgis Rally here in New York, in America, mm-hmm. the, the Ship Rock Cruise, the Motorhead Cruise, just a bunch of stuff for most of my adult life. But then about six years ago, it was obvious to me that radio was dying. People mm-hmm. were transitioning to podcasting, to YouTube, to whatever. And it's funny, a year prior, someone had asked me to do a podcast with them. And my response was, well, podcasting is for people that can't do radio. I'm doing radio. Why would I do a podcast? And then a year later, I'm like, you know, that podcast thing seems like a good idea <laughs> one year later. So I started a year later and I launched the SDR show, which mm-hmm. stands for Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll Show, which is a 180 of the other podcast. One is all about health and wellness. The other is just about debauchery and decadence. But I think mm-hmm. if you are defined by merely one thing, you're doing something wrong. You should have aspects to your personality, right? Yeah, completely. So I launched the SDR show with a comedian friend of mine and it got to be pretty big, pretty, pretty popular. Not like top. It was number one on iTunes twice. So that's, that's pretty awesome. cool on yeah. the comedy charts. And I hit a number 11 once in the overall, which is pretty amazing. But, um, from there, I launched the gas digital network with a, a friend of mine who's a comic and we launched it together five years ago. And that grew to 20 something shows, millions of listeners a week, subscribers and, it's amazing how that ballooned out. Mm-hmm. And then about a year and a half, right before the pandemic, like two years ago, year and a half, two years ago, um, my friend who started Juice Press, who I helped build that brand, I worked with him in the beginning oh. where they had one store and I helped them go from two or three stores to about 30. And I was like, you know, one of the executives, whatever you want to call it. And uh, mm-hmm. I just, I'm good in the food business, but I don't like the food business. Your cat's very cute. He just walked in the room. Oh, thank um, you. She'll interrupt us in a minute. <laughs> uh, she's adorable. Um, so he wanted to start a podcast because he had sold Juice Press and he was on a non-compete. So he wanted to just do something mm. to keep his message out there. Right. Mm-hmm. And the original idea, and it's very funny, is that he, he was doing the show. He didn't want to do it by himself. He asked me to just fill in and kind of help out on the first episode because we know mm-hmm. each other forever. The original title of the show, and we the reason why we changed this is you really have to be like 35 and older to get these jokes and predominant probably Jewish. <laughs> um, his idea, we were like, he is a uh, you know vegan for 40, 35 years, sober for 35 oh, years. Okay. Um, very into meditation, into yoga, mm-hmm. you know, he's a Muay Thai fighter, all these great things, and we're about the same age. And I while not like do much that I would say is detrimental to my health, mm. I wouldn't say I was doing a lot of things that were going to get me into a better headspace, right? Mm-hmm. I was just kind of existing. Yeah. And he asked me at the top of the show, how happy are you on a scale from one to 10? I said, maybe a five, right? That was the idea. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then at that point, the show kind of morphed into, well, let me try and see if we can help you get in to make that a seven or an eight. And let me see if I can guide you. And I feel that a lot of this stuff in the health and wellness space, you said I could curse, is Always. bullshit. It's a lot <laughs> of it is bullshit, right? Yeah. So the idea, the original name of the show was the Sherpa and the Schmuck, meaning okay. the Sherpa is the guide, the Schmuck is the jerk off. And you're trying to figure out which one of us is actually the right guide and which one of us <laughs> is the jerk off. That was for you to decide, right? Mm-hmm. Because I may shit on certain that he wanted me to pray over my food. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. Right. So things like that, you know, and then what happened was he's launching a new brand called good sugar, Mm -hmm. which is also the same messaging of vegan and whatnot, but more about reducing your waste. So no, nothing, no plastic, no single use, anything. Everything is about lowering your footprint on top of also having vegan food, but not Mm. wrong. Um, so the name of the podcast changed to Good Sugar Podcast. During this time is also when the pandemic hit, right? Yeah. And four and a half years ago, five years ago now at this point, my father got sick. He died, got sick about five years ago and died about four years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I went through a state of depression where I, I'm a big guy. I'm six, five and change, right? Mm-hmm. So in your, in your methodology, two meters, right? <laughs> and um, I weigh... Uh, I would, my whole adult life, I weigh like 220 to 235 pounds, somewhere in that area, right? <clears throat> I don't know what that is in stones. Is that what you're doing in there? Yeah, I, I don't know what that is in stones either, but yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so when he got sick and died and I watched my parent die, my first real genuine immediate family loss, 
Mm. I went to 310 pounds. I was eating poorly. I was actually drinking more than I normally do. I even smoked pot a few times, which I never do. And mm. I just was not in the right headspace. Yeah. And I looked sickly and I just felt like crap. I didn't have energy anymore, whatever. So with talking with Marcus every week and having this accountability every week of trying to um, explain yourself, so to speak, you know, yeah. I started to make life changes. I started running. I started meditating. I started stretching. I started working out again. And now I'm down to like 255. So I've lost almost 60 pounds. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And I, I run when I first started running, I, there's an app that I recommend to everybody. It was, it's, it's the letter C, the number two, the number five, and then the letter K. So C two five K and mm -hmm. it stands for couch to a 5k run. So get your right. fat ass off the couch. <laughs> We're going to get you to do 5k, which for Americans is about three miles. Okay. And it starts with interval training. And I couldn't do, it's like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off the first day uh, you know, and maybe for 20 minutes, you do a mm. minute walk, a 30 second run, a two minute walk, a third, whatever. And you'd go through it and you go through it. And I had started a couple of times in my life and always bailed after the second week. But I said, I am not stopping. I just am not stopping, especially mm. <clears throat> I had to go on every week and explain, did I do it this week? And I didn't want to lie. I've never lied on the air. So yeah, I went from couch to a 5k, 5k to a 10k, 10k to a 15k. Now I've, I've only missed like three or four runs in a year. And I just did my half marathon two weeks ago wow. and I do it every other, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I run a four mile, a seven mile and a 10 mile every single week. I now train. I just came from the gym. That's why I may look sweaty and messy. I train with my a trainer three days a week. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see I have a bike there. There's a Peloton mm -hmm. right here. I do, I do not miss a meditation. I start every morning that way. So and I've been trying, although I do feel I have an unhealthy relationship with food. Hmm. I also feel that not everybody gets the same reaction to food. You don't, I think some people are the ones like me that will dream about a pasta they had mm -hmm. and other people look at it as fuel and yeah. we're not, we're just not all the same. We're not all wired the same. And it's unfair to say, Oh, just don't eat that. It's like telling a drug addict, Oh, just stop doing drugs. You know, mm -hmm. that's the answer. Yeah. Well, it's more than that from, for that person. And so that's that I dream about, like I had a steak four years ago. That was the best steak I ever had. I still mm -hmm. think about that steak, not someone who's in phenomenal shape. Mm -hmm. Isn't thinking about the steak they had four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the thing I say is that I accountability is a very helpful tool for me. Mm -hmm. You got to find what works for you. Not only that, the Peloton, I enjoy the running, although I don't say I enjoy it. I enjoy the feeling after it, yeah. which is what I focus on when I'm running. Yeah. I have literally said to myself while I'm running, as I ran in the winter, I ran in rain and snow and just kept going. Mm -hmm. I would say to myself while I'm running, well, if I trip right now and hurt myself, I don't have to finish this run. <laughs> like I would look at it that way, which is psychopathic. I see someone coming at me. He's like, oh, she hits me. I can go home. You know, that's <laughs> going on in my head. Yeah. And think like, oh, it's cold. It's warm and beautiful in your apartment. It's freezing out. Just go home. Mm -hmm. But I would just stick it out. I did it over and over again. And now, mm. you know, I just know I set up my clothes the night before I get ready. I get up at six in the morning and go run and get it over with. And there's mm -hmm. something about, you know, I get up. I have this routine where I, I stretch. I meditate, I clean my apartment. Um, I go run, come home and shower, put the dishes away, whatever. And then now it's like 830 in the morning. I also answered all my emails that came in the night before. Mm -hmm. At 830 in the morning, I said to myself, I have done more than most people will do all day. Yeah. It's already, I could get, I could write off the rest of the day and feel accomplished. And mm -hmm. that is what keeps me going more than anything else. I've often said that if you could just bottle that feeling of the second you leave the gym, or the mm. second you finish a workout, that's what you have to focus on more than anything. Not everyone is wired to like my trainer who loves to work out when he gets amped up. Oh, I'm going to go lift weights or mm -hmm. most people don't feel that way. If you did, we wouldn't need trainers. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. And that's the, the, uh, the, then by the way, the last thing I would say is I, um, I thought it was funny because we interview a lot of interesting people on, mm -hmm. uh, this good sugar pockets. We had Kevin Hart's, trainer. The guy has like 3 million followers. Um, mm. We have the guy who started uh, P90X and Beach Body Workout. We have the guy that <clears throat> excuse me, trained all of the um, Marvel superstars from Chris Hemsworth to, to Scarlett Johansson. Like, wow. And 
what happened that made me laugh is I started realizing one day, oh, um, they're all kind of saying the same thing in fancy terms. So I put this mm -hmm. book out, which I'm going to hold up. I don't know if you do this on video or do not. It, do it, do it. So the book is called The 100% Guaranteed Guide to Weight Loss and Fitness by Ralph Sutton, right? Mm -hmm. It's a 100-page book. But I put this out as a joke. It went to number 77 on Amazon. There are two pages. The first page says, chapter one, eat less. Mm -hmm. Chapter two is work out more. Yeah. And then the rest of the book is blank. <laughs> but I stand by it. If you do that and you don't lose weight and start feeling better, regardless mm -hmm. of where you're starting and where you want to go, I will give you your money back. Guaranteed. Because mm -hmm. it will make it. It may not make the difference you want to make. You know, if you need to lose 50 pounds. And, you know, I tell people, if you're doing one, if you're doing nothing right now, do one mm -hmm. push up. Yeah. If you're eating a 10 ounce steak every night, have an eight ounce steak every night. Just make that change. And yeah. see what happens in three months, you know, and that kind of micro change manageable stuff makes things far more attainable and less ominous. Yeah. And that's no, my that's... stick. That brings you up to me. That's brilliant. Thank you. No, that, you know what? That makes complete sense. And I, I totally agree. Like it's, it's when I always feel like when, when we try and change something and we go from that one state and we see the ideal state, like right down here and we go, right, well, I just want to go from this to this. And then right. you fail because of course like you, say, you can't, to fail. yeah, you can't get you absolutely to that point. Cannot. Um, In a very yeah. interesting comparison, you know, so my network has been built up. It's almost five years now. Right. Hmm. And we have not only 20 shows, beautiful studios in New York. I'm in my apartment right now, but hmm. really nice studios in New York. We have some celebrities on the network. We have a subscription model, tens of thousands of, of paid subscribers, and we sell our own merch. We also have an ad sales department that not only sells for us, but for shows off network. Our merch department does for merch off network. We do studio rentals as well. We have all these things going on, right? Mm -hmm. And at least five times now, a friend or someone I know will come in that's in the in this world and sees what we're doing. Go, oh, I want to do that mm -hmm. too. And I think you realize that it was five years of mistakes and five years of problems and five years of almost closing the doors until yeah. we figured this all out. And you're looking to start at 100 where you haven't even hit one yet. Mm -hmm. You're going to fail, you know, and then every one of them either gave up or got frustrated or came back to me and asked me for advice. I was like, you're just trying to do too much. And mm -hmm. it just, it's too, uh, it's too much. Start with do one podcast, start building up a following. So in the same respect, like you're saying, yeah, it's very easy to look at the end goal and say, oh, I want that. But if you don't take step one, you're never going to get there. Hmm. Yeah, completely sound. So, that's, so what um, you said there about accountability, and I think that's, again, I think that's really important as well, because if you're, if you're just kind of do it, doing it solo and you've got no real measure against where you're going or what you're achieving, and you kind of put that, that not the responsibility, but you kind of put some of that in the hands of like your friends or people around you and mm -hmm. say, right, I'm going to commit to doing this. If I don't do it, pull me up, you know? And I think I right. complete, I think that's a great method, you know, just to, and it could be pull me up, but it also could be embarrass me. It could mm. be ridicule me. It's what works for you. Some people mm -hmm. respond more to positive influence and some don't like there's this great uh, analysis about uh, how reward can be negative, like reward value could be negative. And the example is if I came up to you in the street and said, I'm going to give you 20 bucks to eat this banana. Mm -hmm. Your immediate thought process is, well, what the fuck is wrong with that banana that you're going to give me 20 <laughs> bucks for it? Right. Whereas if I just said to you, do you want a banana? You would say, sure, I'll have a banana. But because of the reward aspect, mm -hmm. you're like, well, what's going on here? Why am I being rewarded for this? So maybe not for everybody. Reward is the best system uh, some sort of, um, system of people that are helping you feel better. Mm. For me, it's also like, um, and this is what worked for me. I did this show, a very popular uh, Sirius XM show. I was a guest mm. on and I was at my fattest, right? And to get thousands of DMs or comments that were like, again, I'm sorry for cursing so much. Go you for it. fat <laughs> fuck. You look like Bay Shrek. You're Frankenstein's monsters, uglier brother, like all these different things. Mm. That was my catalyst. Like, all right, these people are right. Like it's, I am, I knew I was fat. I was just kidding myself. Mm. And it was the catalyst for me. And that may not work for everybody. Some people may see that and go, I'm going to go eat ice cream because I feel terrible. So you mm. have to find the metrics that make you, that motivate you. Like I tell a lot of people, you don't want to start running if you don't 
either know you're going to commit to it like I did Mm -hmm. or if you don't love it. So you're not going to say you got to find what you like. Is it, is it Peloton? Is it dancing in your house? Is it yoga? Whatever makes you feel good is the one you're going to stick with and the one you're most likely going to return to. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be what worked for your best friend or what you see working online because we're all wired differently. You need to find Mm -hmm. the thing that works for you in it. It, I, I thought never, look, I'm a big guy. And at 50 years old to start running, I thought my knees were going to hurt. My foots were going to, my feet were going to hurt. Mm. There was no way I'm sticking with this, but I just listened to my body. If I was in pain, I went home. I did mm-hmm. a lot of, which I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, the, um, the downtime and making sure you take care of yourself to, yeah. to rehabilitate yourself and feel better. And I compression and massages and stretching and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have not hurt myself. I'd never got mm-hmm. hurt. And I thought for sure I would, but you got to find the reward system or structure that makes sense for you. I think that's really, really sound advice. And I, yeah, I, I, I always get frustrated when you see these things come up on like the Facebook ads and everything. And it's like, do this six week program and you will be, go from this to this. And I'm like, come on guys, really? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're like, it's got to work for you. And like I say, if you don't enjoy it, if you aren't, if you just aren't engaging with it and you're not committed, it's never going to work. You right. know, and so. also in the same respect with like, you have this podcast, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but when t- people come to me and want to start a podcast, mm. I say, it, you are not going to make money for a, a year or two, if not more, if mm. ever. So you better do it because you love it. Mm-hmm. And you better do it because you know, it's going to take a while. If it's quick gain, it's quick loss. Mm-hmm. Just like they go to any lottery winner who won $10 million overnight a year later, they're in worse financial shape than when they started because it came too easy. Mm-hmm. Whereas the people that work hard and build their income over a lifetime, that money ain't going anywhere unless something crazy happens. But in the same respect, it the way I feel now, and I still know I got about 20 more pounds to go, and I have my bumps in the road where I'll have ice cream and I'll screw up, mm. but don't dwell on those days. Just go forward. There's only so much damage you can do in a day. You know, <laughs> how much yeah. do you eat in a day? You know, when, it, when an average calorie is what, 35, 3,500 calories is a pound, I think. Something like that. could be wrong, 2,500, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's 2,500 calories a pound. To do 5,000 calories in a day, it, you, it's a lot to try and get that in you. You know, yeah. it's not easy. You'd have to really force yourself. And that's two pounds in a day of food, right? Mm-hmm. Assuming everything else was equal the other six days. It's not that bad. You can make that up in a week or two. You know, that's yeah. not that bad. Don't dwell on it. Just move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, that, that whole, that whole kind of self-flagellation thing I've always thought is such a, such a kind of limiter to us kind of, you know, becoming better and growing as people. Cause it's, it's, you know, I would always say to people and it shocks me when I, when I ask people like, what's your, what's your inner monologue? Like, you know, how do you talk to yourself? And they're like, Oh, I'll say I'm like, I'm a fucking idiot or I've, I've made this mistake and what have you. And I'm like, well, would you talk to your friends like that? So, like, Oh no, of course not. That's, that's right. horrendous. It's like, well, why aren't you showing some kindness to yourself? Where's that self-compassion? You know, it's just, I don't feel like if we aren't compassionate to ourselves, then when we're trying to do these things to improve, then I just feel like it's, it's yet another stumbling block that kind of stops us from, from well, moving forward. The, the thing that's very obvious for everybody, I think we're all better at giving advice than taking it. You know, mm. we're all better at seeing what's wrong with someone else and not seeing what's wrong with ourselves, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's inherent in human nature. There's an author that he's also a doctor that I had on Good Sugar. Mm. And I could not stop rem- uh, recommending this book enough. The book is called Chatter, C-H-A-T-T-E-R. Mm-hmm. And I listen to the audio books. I listen to books when I'm running. I like to feel that I'm improving my mind and my body at the same time. So I listen mm. to educational books when I run. It's not for everybody, you know, and that's just what I do. But um, it's all about how you manage your inner voice and the negative thoughts. And he calls those negative thoughts chatter and mm-hmm. focusing on the positive. And the biggest difference, it's such a small change. I happen, thankfully, to always do this mm. before reading the book. So it's just don't. Talk to yourself as an I. Address yourself as a person. Ralph, you can do this. Ralph, you this, Mm. right? By applying that third person pronoun, it sounds so stupid, but he has all the science to back it up, by the way, which I love Mm. because I'm a science guy. Yeah. Um, How it changes your outlook. Instead of saying you're you're a fat fuck, (laughs) if you say Ralph, stop being a fat fuck, that little change 
will help because it mm. feels like it's coming from someone else using the you and not the I or the third person pronoun of, of your name or something like that, of the they or he or whatever. But um, that little change makes a big difference and helps in how you manage your inner voice. And mm. I would really recommend that book, Chatter. If you're like me, where you want more science and fact versus hippy dippy mala bead stuff. And that's just who I am. If that works for you, because in the book, it also shows you that um, how like crystals work for people, mm. even if you know they're bullshit, if, and you don't even have to believe that it works. Mm -hmm. It works because a part of your brain believes it. But even if you know that it doesn't work, if you say it works for some people, there mm -hmm. are some people that have seen a marketable change in doing that, which is crazy. Like they gave people the, um, a, a medicine. And if they tell you, hey, this medicine helps with um, headaches mm -hmm. and it's just sugar water, whatever, people mm -hmm. feel better because the placebo effect is strong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even if they say, look, this is a placebo, it's not real. It's supposed to make you feel better is the idea there still was a percentageable, percentageable marketable increase in people who felt better, which is crazy. It that's just nice. shows you how powerful your brain is. Yeah, that's incredible. But especially like to know that it's a placebo and you it still it's works. Placebo, that's and it still works for people. So <laughs> it's amazing. That's so I'm a science guy. So when he has all this scientific double blind data to show you, mm -hmm. of course, Everything can be manipulated. I get that. There's ways to look at numbers. Even yeah. with averages, they're doing mean, mode, median. There's always ways to make things look better. Mm -hmm. If you take the, the middle income of a uh, certain, you know, certain group of people, it sounds a lot better if there's 20 billionaires in that group and everyone else is poor. Yep. That, that income is really high as a middle ground. But if you look at the mode, most common, then that's not going to be. So numbers can always be manipulated. So mm -hmm. I understand that. But it felt pretty genuine to me and mm -hmm. I go by instinct. So the, the book may not work for you, but it worked for me. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Thank you for recommending that. That's yeah. Brilliant. Um, so last, last section I want to move on to is to ask you what your thoughts are on sort of well being as a whole in the current climate, like how people approach it. Do you think there's mm -hmm. ways it can be improved all that kind of thing? Well, I mean the biggest problem, and this is just, uh, the biggest problem of the day is mm -hmm. weeding out the bullshit. There's so mm -hmm. much lies, misinformation and false gurus in the health and wellness space. It's amazing how many people have the, they talk about, and we've had a lot of these people on the show that, you know, it's not about money. It's not about things. It's about finding inner peace and being helpful. So uh, just high, get my, buy my $500 course. It's mm -hmm. like, but you just said money's not important and you're charging <laughs> me $500? That doesn't make any sense. And there was another guy who talked about, oh, it's all about nature and unplugging and not having any, you know, outside influence while he's streaming it from Instagram. You mm -hmm. don't see the irony of that? You're telling me to <laughs> unplug and you're using Instagram, right? So there's so much that it's hard to separate. So mm. to me, anyone that's really selling weekends or, 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 self-help guru -y kind of people, it doesn't sit right with me. That's me, mm -hmm. right? Again, some people need the, the Tim Robbins of the world. Is that his name? Tim Robbins? It's the guy, the oh, Anthony, sure. Anthony, the, the, the yes, self-help guru. Tony Robbins, that's right. Tony yes. Robbins, right? Yes. Tony Robbins, yeah. Um, I look at it as nonsense to me. Mm. It just seems like I'd love to see if you took the 30 years of him being around, every single person that took his course, mm -hmm. how many of them are actually happy now? Let's find out how many of them are wealthy. How many of them found their key to success. I'm sure it's laughably low, mm. right? You can always find the one or two cherry picked. Oh my God, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's so much out there of misinformation. The more you could just bring it inward amongst the people that you trust and know, the better it is for you. We all know the basics. If I put in front of you fried chicken with cheese and a milkshake, Mm -hmm. or a kale salad with grilled chicken breast and yeah. ask you to pick the healthier one, right? We all know the answer. There is no fucking mystery. <laughs> if I ask you, should you stay home and eat cake all day or do a 30 minute run every day? Mm -hmm. We all know the answer. There is no key to it. The trick is to find the way to get you there. And it's yeah. starting small. I don't care if it's one push up a day. I don't care if it's one walk around the block a day. The, it was a, a quote from, um, uh, I forget his name now, but Chris, Chris Pratt, 
who was in Guardians oh, of the yes. Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Right? That used to be a fat guy and then all of a sudden is a great shape guy, right? Mm, yeah. And he said in an interview, what was your key to uh, ask, him, ask him to get into great shape? And it was like July or August when he asked him. And he goes, do you remember the winter, like back in January? And he said, yeah. He goes, doesn't seem that long ago, right? He goes, no, nah, it's, you know, it's just winter. It's, it's okay. Now you're here. If you would have made any changes in January, you would have seen light years now. And it happens in a second. Mm -hmm. It's when you look at forward is when it seems unattainable. But if you thought about what you could be like, look, the pandemic, a year and a half went by yeah. and it all blinked for everybody. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you were doing 100 pushups a day when it started, what kind of shape you'd be in right now. Or imagine yeah. if you went completely raw vegan, whatever it is. And it, it happened in a blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. So imagine how you'd feel today. So don't focus on, oh my God, it's a six month journey in front of me. Focus on now. I'm going to make the choice and that's it each day. And if you fuck up, start over again. Who cares? Just go forward. <laughs> and that don't look online. Don't look out there. I mean, it's funny. We both do health and wellness podcasts. So <laughs> we'll not do that. But I think that it's going to come from within just like when I'm sorry, I'm carrying on so much. Oh, go for like it. When, go um, for it. If you're in a bad relationship, mm. right? And all your friends tell you, oh, you got to let that girl go. She's negative. You're unhappy when you were there. And whether it's a guy or a girl and you say, oh, you don't know them when you're not there. Or all the things you hear a billion times, right? Mm -hmm. At one point in your life, you say to yourself, for most people, again, not always, because there are unfortunately destructive relationships and stuff. But there's, for most people, mm. there comes that moment when you go, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be in this. And you just, it doesn't matter the billions of times people said to you, get over it. And you went back to them. You broke up. You got back. Mm -hmm. One day it just clicks and you're done and yeah. it gets away from you. So you have to find that switch for your health and wellness journey. And it may be 20 false starts until you get to the 21st one, but who cares? Just keep doing it. Just like no one cares when they go back to their ex, even though they told mm -hmm. everyone, oh, I'm over that fucking person. Then you go back <laughs> to them. You're like, oh, I love them again. And everyone just accepts it. Same thing here. Don't yeah. worry about it. Just move on and start again. Brilliant. That's massively insightful. Love it. Thank you. Uh, no, that's awesome. Um, I am. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask, is there anything else you'd like to tag on to the end before we finish up? Well, you know, I, I hate to be a uh, promo whore. By all but, means, uh, go for it. <laughs> following me everywhere at I am Ralph Sutton. Follow my podcast, the SDR show at the SDR show. And my other one, sorry, I have hiccups at good sugar podcast. Um, SDR is twice a week. It is not for the faint of heart. It's ridiculous. You know, it's just like uh, old school morning radio. I don't know if you have that in England, but just like nonsense, but fun. And we get some amazing guests. We had Mark Cuban on. We had um, Gene Simmons on. We just had, speaking of fellow Englishmen, we just had Def Leppard on. Oh. Um, we get a lot of interesting people on that show. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was on. We had the Struts on. They're also English. Um, awesome. And uh, it's a really fun show. It does really well. And then Good Sugar, it comes out every Monday. Um, and it's all about health and wellness. And it's with a heavy dose of silliness as well, because it's hard for me to take any of it seriously. I need to like, if I don't bring in some sort of like schmucky angle to look at some of this absurdity, mm -hmm. I just, it's not, doesn't feel genuine to me, you know? So yeah. I need to have that part of it in me to laugh. You have to laugh at yourself a little. I think that's the, mo these days they feel a lot of people have lost the ability to laugh at themselves. And that's why there's so much of this cancel culture. Yeah. Me too. And, all, and not me too, but cancel culture and, you know, people getting offended by everything and mm -hmm. because they can't laugh at themselves. And I think you need yeah. to be able to be content with who you are. And if you're happy with who you are, it's, it's harder for other people to upset you about who you are. Uh, yeah. I'll end with a great anecdote on that. We had, uh, there's a very, I don't know how old you are, but there's an eighties rock band called Skid Row. And yes. the singer came on. It was, it was a big story last year because it was in every single rock magazine, whatever. We said something on our show during the interview with Sebastian Bach mm -hmm. that pissed him off. And he ended the show 10 minutes in and killed the camera. And then we filled time for 45 minutes, like being, Oh my God, what the fuck just happened? Right. <laughs> the joke was a gay joke about Rob Halford, the singer of mm -hmm. Judas Priest. Not at his expense, really, but whatever it is, it was a, a, a joke, not even a gay, whatever. It was a gay comment about Rob Halford. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't my comment. My co-host made it, but he got mad and he hung up and that was like everywhere. Fortunately, I did radio, as I told you, for mm -hmm. 15 years. I happened to know Rob Halford. So I got in touch with him and said, we need you to come on the next episode, please. 
and mm. he did it as if he got him on. We told him the joke that upset his friend Sebastian Bach so much, mm-hmm. and he started laughing. And long story short, we are now putting on a roast for Rob Halford. <laughs> so he thought it was hilarious. He wants us to do more of it. Brilliant. So the person who the joke was about wasn't angry. So what are you getting angry for? Mm-hmm. You're, you're mad at something that he's not mad at. So why are you mad? Right. Yeah. And a lot of that comes from Rob is very content with being gay. Him and I have talked about it many times. In fact, the last thing I'll plug is mm. on Thursday. Um, I don't know when this comes out, but uh, tomorrow for me, which is uh, not to date this, but it's coming out <laughs> Thursday. Mm-hmm. I was on a reality show 20 years ago called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. They uh-huh. rebooted it recently. And it was five gay guys make over straight guy. And they now have a reunion that we shot right like in October that comes out on Thursday on E it's called reunion road trip. And I'm on that episode. Mm-hmm. But, um, when we filmed it originally 16 years ago, 17 years ago, I tried to get Carson who was the main guy from the uh, queer eye mm-hmm. and Rob Halford together. Cause they knew they liked each other. And I was trying to set them up because I'm Rob and I were comfortable talking about it. And yeah. so was Carson. And I, so you're the one that's uncomfortable. You know, if you're, mm-hmm. if we can joke about it, we're comfortable with each other, but you're not comfortable with it is why you're having a problem with it. Yeah. So long story short, try and be happy with who you are. And I think you'll be a lot happier in the long run. Love it. Ralph, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Very nice talking with you too as well, sir. Brilliant. You take care. And yeah, if you remember everybody, have a little listen to Ralph's podcasts, Good Sugar and Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll. And uh, yeah, we shall catch you on our next episode. Peace and love. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that you found it useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writings or work around psychology and philosophy and general day-to-day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is theobservingeye.com. Dot substack.com and that's I as in the letter not I as in each gelatinous organ through which you see take care everybody much love and I'll see you soon